Well, since I've been on a roll for these last couple days and talking about personal stuff, um, which I don't ordinarily do, let me just make it. Let, let's just let's just make it a trifecta, right? There's a sense of completion when things come in threes. That's why you have your trilogy, right? Uh, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Although in this case, it's not really that. These are just three. These are just three separate uh, stories. Um, but I shared what I what I had to say uh, yesterday and the day before because I, I thought I thought it, it was valuable information to to convey um, to others and um, because it didn't feel just indulgent or didn't feel like I was just um, what would be the expression like I was just um, spinning my own wheels or something like that um, so today I want to tell you how and why I stopped seeing a uh, therapist and um, yeah I know that I, I know that probably a lot of you out there are, are anti-therapy and I, I'm kind of anti-therapy too I'm not necessarily anti-therapy but I'm against most of what therapy uh, seems to be um, and I, there's something about the entire uh, notion that you can talk to somebody who who can help you. Uh, you know, I guess I, you know I'm not down on that idea generally. I talk therapy; it's something everybody does, whether you see a therapist or not. When you're when you have something on your mind, you talk about it with someone. It could be a friend or a spouse um, or I don't know a family member, but you, you do. There is. There is a there is something therapeutic just to talking um, to someone who, who whom you you trust and whom you feel has your best interests at heart. And so you know, I kind of fell into the uh, be, being of a melancholic temperament. I I, I so, sort of fell into the pattern of uh, seeing therapists early, uh, especially. You, like in my, uh, my teenage years, I got sent to one for a, a certain amount of time. Uh, eventually, called it quits there. But but then later later in life, uh, I, I kind of came back to it. I'm not saying it's something any uh, that I'm ashamed of. I'm not saying it's something anything anybody should be ashamed of. But I am saying it with the caveat that therapy is often just just garbage. I mean. <laughs> It's it, it, it depends on who you're talking to, it depends on what they tell you, it depends on if, uh, it depends on so many things. But I don't think that just getting a degree in a field makes you qualified to, uh, to help people in some unique way. Um, I really, truly don't. And, of course, of course the, the psychotherapy psychotherapeutic field uh, the APA you know is riddled with things that, that you know it's obviously it's a political institution right uh, tw 20 30 years ago homosexuality was uh, a pathology now suddenly it's fine you know what changed what changed the culture changed that's all they're just following the culture you know I don't really not much to, to admire there about that. Um, plus, plenty of therapists have, uh, you know, destructive ideologies uh, regarding the family and, and, and so forth. Yeah, you know, most of them are on the left, uh, politically speaking. You know, all of that. All of that is true. Nevertheless, I found one uh, who uh, I who I felt good with fairly good around and I started uh, talking to this particular therapist uh, at first uh, uh, we've met regularly and uh, I like every couple of weeks and then at, at some point it was like I was trying to break it you know I was trying to break it off I was trying to write a dear John letter to my therapist 
a Dear John letter. <laughs> a Dear Jane letter. She she was female. She is female. So, uh, you know, the Dear John letter. Does, does, that, does that even register anymore, culturally speaking? The, the, that's that's where you break it off with something like it's like a breakup letter. It, it was called a Dear John letter, but gosh, that sounds so like 1975 right now. The way it, <laughs> the way it's the way it resonates, it just sounds so uh, so old so old fashioned. Um, anyway, I I I try I couldn't quite uh, sever the uh, the the uh, relationship. Um, such as it is, such as it was. Um, but then it was severed for me. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, first of all, I saw this therapist once uh, after the pandemic started. I'm never going to say that word without making it sound dumb and stupid, because it is dumb and stupid. Um, I'm never going to use that word in any kind of... Uh, <laughs> in any kind of a serious way or that implies that I take anything about it seriously so uh, so there you go but nevertheless it was it was around the time that the things were people were things were locking down uh, although where I live things were locked down for a fairly short amount of time compar comparatively speaking to other parts of the country and parts of the world here in the state of Georgia it was you know things were locked down for maybe uh, couple of months and then right around in May and especially in June of 2000 pretty much everything started opening up again but so it was sometime in that period uh, I think maybe April or so I went and saw this this therapist um, and she had a mask on and uh, this 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 wasn't the breaking point for me let me make that clear um, but it was profoundly alienating. It was something that I, I didn't mention it. I didn't mention it. She didn't mention it. Um, but it was something like, and and I sort of understood. It was it was I understood she was going to continue to see people. <clears throat> there was concern. People would be, you know, I could I could see doing it just out of a sense of. Well, even if you don't agree with it, whether it, even if you think it's crap, uh, this is what's being, this is this is the kind of behavior that's more or less being um, socially, if not legally, mandated right now. So I'm just going to do it to show that I'm I'm responsible and I take people's concerns seriously. But I think the effect that it had um, was uh, to 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 reinforce a sense of alienation um, and again it was it was something that was completely unspoken between us I don't even remember what what, what, what we were talking about at that time um, but uh, so after that I, I stopped again but but then um, uh, eventually came back it was like um, I, I sort of halfway thought that I might still need this or might still benefit from this from time to time, uh, and um, so I, I, you know, I didn't totally close it off from myself. I, I didn't. The thing was, I didn't feel over the course of the time that uh, I that I spoke to her, that I was with this therapist. I didn't feel like oh. Through therapy, I'm getting better. This is, this is, uh, you know, I'm 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 getting to uh, the point where I'm I'm seeing things differently and, and ceasing to be uh, so uh, so melancholic uh, and uh, you know becoming happier and and uh, seeing the world through more of a lens of joy than than before. You know, it was like it didn't really ever have that long, anything long term, um, any long term kind of benefit. The benefits that it had were short term. It was like going in, being able to talk about something, and you know, with somebody who you felt kind of could possibly offer something to uh, 
you know, just, just the same way when you bring something up, you know, when something is on your mind and you bring it up with a friend who, who you feel can offer uh, something helpful. It is the same, same kind of notion as that, except therapists exist in this weird kind of um, circumstance where you're invited to be to be intimate I don't mean intimate in the the uh, euphemistic way that we talk about sex um, uh, but you are invited to be emotionally intimate with this person um, but it's completely a one-way street and uh, you know sometimes they, they might share things back with you from their own lives that uh, that are also of a of a confiding sort of nature um, so there is some give and take but yet once it's all over it's tr purely transactional when I say seeing a therapist is like seeing a prostitute I mean I think there I think that comparison is is, is apt I think it really is because there's the same kind of um, well, you see a you, you see a prostitute. You simulate uh, uh, what was the word intimacy. <laughs> um, in this case, it's physical intimacy. You engage in physical intimacy, but it's not it's not true physical intimacy that that you would have with a romantic partner. It's transactional. Afterwards, you pay her the money, and you move on. Same thing happens after therapy. It's 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 you know you you don't you don't do anything physical. Hopefully, uh, since that would be breaking the uh, breaking the law. Um, but uh, but you um, you know you 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 share what's on your mind, uh, and then afterwards, just like well, our time is up. Um, so pay me. <laughs> Makes me think of that the, the the scene, the Goodfellas scene, you know, with the the, the the restaurant who's the client of the the mob, and they're they're never understanding of anything. It's like I had a bad month. Fuck you, pay me. But but my my uh, my uh, grandfather's sick in the hospital. Fuck you, pay me. It was just there was this this this, this whole thing where. They were just absolutely ruthless about, you know, the payment. It's got to be. <clears throat> you got to write that check. You got to give, present that, present that plastic. It's transactional. So there's a weirdness about the fact that you are, you know, in this uh, friend-like relationship with this person, but it all, but you're not really friends. It's simply transactional. That doesn't mean that they don't care about you. Um, it doesn't mean, and uh, you know, it doesn't. It's not. It's not suggesting anything uh, bad or or sinister or or uh, disreputable about about the therapist. But it does. It, it, it is. It is strange. It, it's a strange kind of kind of uh, thing where it's a it's a strictly professional um, transaction. But it, it takes place under the auspices of this, you know, being this very emotionally intimate, personal kind of uh, format. Anyway, I, I went back. Uh, I eventually came back, and it was like I was, I was setting my own time. I was like, you know, it used to be, well, uh, go out and, you know, after the session, go out and work, talk to, talk to my secretary and work out your next the next time you'll we'll, we'll see each other so it was sort of like you know they had you nailed down like okay well when, when's the next time you want to come uh, and you you felt obliged to say oh okay I can go in blah blah, blah two weeks on September 23rd or whatever um, but I, I eventually just was, was gonna I eventually just said I'll come back when, when I want to come back I'll set an appointment okay um, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just go out and set regular appointments, especially because, as I was saying, I didn't, I wasn't seeing the long-term benefits. It'd be one thing if this was some kind of, if I was enrolled in some kind of program 
where the intention of it was, uh, you know, you go through steps, you know, I guess like what the 12 step thing is supposed to be, I don't know. But, but where it's supposed to have this tangible effect that stays with you and changes you, you know, uh, noticeably. Uh, I didn't find myself changed noticeably. Like I said, the benefits were strictly short term. So, was I really getting the bang for my buck? I don't know. I mean, it was. I, I didn't. <clears throat> I didn't. Didn't necessarily seem that way. Um, so, so what? What brought it all to a close? Well, I went in another time, and this was. This was maybe a year later, a year after the mask uh, incident, and. Uh, so this, this that would have made it early 2021, um, or maybe early to mid 2021. I'm not totally sure what the month was, but I know it was sometime last year. So I went in, and uh, this was when they were giving the Baj, when the Baj was the, was a thing. You know, when the, there was the campaign to get the Baj, and she asked me if I'd gotten it. I said, No, I haven't. And she said something like, well, you're going to get it, aren't you? You are going to get it, right? And I was, I thought to myself, why is she doing this? Why, um, why, uh, why am I hearing this, uh, th these words coming from her lips? Um, and I, I don't remember what I, I think I said something like, well, I don't know what's in that junk. <laughs> that was, and that was true, and it is true. I don't, and neither do you. Nobody does. Um, <laughs> but, but anyway, it was a, it was a moment. It passed, uh, but she was very stern, uh, and she's like, you know, like twenty years older than me. So it was, you know, it could. I think. I don't think it was meant to be a uh, a sinister thing. I think it was meant to be a sort of uh, like motherly concern, almost. But but it was like a very it was very it was it was, it was rather pushy. Uh, it was rather you know well you're going to get it right you, you you are going to get it um, you know really. Uh, really laying on the <clears throat> the pressure um, and I didn't like that <laughs> didn't like that one bit and so I thought after this nah, that's I think I'm about I think I'm about done with this I didn't say anything you know I just had a regular session talked about whatever but afterwards I, I said well I'll, I'll contact you when I want to uh, do this again, and I haven't contacted her or her secretary ever since. So that was what it took. That was the little little push that I needed. It was just that 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 uh, that bit of nagging on her part. Um, so what what is the, what's the lesson to be learned from this? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just a. An interesting story it's uh, I mean or it's interesting to me I don't know if it's hopefully it's interesting to some of you um, it is it is it is strange that um, that um, counselors you know people who pride themselves or part of part of their whole shtick is you know I'm not I'm going to be impartial here I'm not going to impose my my will upon you. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you ought to do this or you ought to do that. I'm just here to listen. Um, which was, you know, more or less, she was not, she did not generally seem like a, a, a you know, a, uh, a directive kind of dogmatic person. But in this particular way, <clears throat> on this particular thing, she was very directive, very dogmatic. Um, and it was, she, and she was on the wrong side of this, on this one. She was on the wrong side, but then so was much of her profession, much of the medical, 
and psychological uh, and how much of the you know uh, much of the world that that uh, has power over the rest of us <clears throat> are on the wrong side. Uh, somebody tell me why we're always on the wrong side. Remember that line from uh, I Ain't Gonna Play Sun City by U Artists United Against Apartheid. Uh, it, it actually uh, um, works here. So anyway, that's why I, that's how I stopped seeing my therapist. Uh, interested to hear anybody's thoughts. Thanks for watching.